Welcome back to Todd Bosley's World Famous Treasure Hunt. Today we're with Gene again, who was in our episode two. It's great to see you today, Gene. Yep. Thank you. Uh, this is why I love doing this show. Gene has brought some fabulous things in today that we're going to show you. There's history lessons almost with every single piece. I started a show. I started this show because we've seen over the years so many interesting things come in, and you can only tell people about it. You can't really show them and. Mm -hmm. Sure enough, you show up today, I see this old piece of stoneware, which I don't know anything about, but I know it's very valuable and mm -hmm. all these different things. It's just, just so interesting. It's very exciting to look at all these different things and think that they were made and people collect them. And you really don't even know they exist until you see them in a, in a show like this. Mm -hmm. So, Gene, I'm going to turn it over to you because you seem to have all the knowledge. Gene is a, a full-time professional picker. That's what he does. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he goes around to uh, flea markets, garage sales, any place that he can buy unique and interesting things. And uh, he frankly knows what he's looking for. So he'll find what he thinks is of value and he'll buy it. And then he sells it to folks like me uh, who then try to sell it for a profit to a customer. Everything you see in our show today will be available for sale if Gene and I can come to a deal, which I'm hopeful that we can. Mm -hmm. So Gene, with that said, it's all you. Why don't we start with the, the posters and the picture and yep. kind of go from there. Well, the movie posters are always going to be collectible. Of course, the older, the more vintage, uh, the more value. And uh, there was a story uh, down here in Ohio, uh, probably about 30 years ago, where a guy had worked at a movie theater and he had taken the, uh, he had taken the, uh, the movie posters and rolled them up and put them in the joints in his wall for insulation. Well, when the guy passed away, they went in there and they found all these antique movie posters and stuff like that. And uh, so anyhow, there was a guy that showed up to, to buy one of the movie posters and he spent a lot of money on, on the uh, one poster that he wanted. And then he turned around and he set it on fire and burned it. Well, everybody was upset because it was such a rare poster. And the guy says, well, you know, I did that because now mine is is worth more because there's no more like it you know so movie posters are collectible uh just depends on on how old they are and the condition and everything and this is a print probably european with the deer over here um the print is in very good shape the matting is is coursed a little bit uh water stained but the print itself is probably european i'd say turn of the century or earlier this would be worth at least a hundred dollars and it may be up closer to three or four hundred dollars hunting season's in you got hunters out there would love to have that in their man cave so so that's really, so if really you're good. in the field and you see a piece like this what's something you look for how do you evaluate something like that to kind of figure out what it might be? well you have to look at a lot of prints and of course if you got books on art that would help also you mm -hmm. know as far as telling you what the valuation of some of this stuff is and what the desirability is. Anything hunting is going to be very, very desirable. Desirable. Okay. okay. And like I said, people would probably take this, put a new mat around it, put it in their in their uh, man cave if they're a hunter or whatever yeah. the case is, mm -hmm. and they'd be able to, you know, say, you know, that's a nice print. You know, I, right. I like that. You know, because it's a hunting scene. You know. You had told us the other day that uh, you can use a magnifying glass to identify a print from a actual photo yeah i believe you can because yeah. of because of the little patterns that are on there on a print itself yeah. you know and uh it, it somebody that knows this stuff would zoom in on that right away right. they would have a magnifying glass probably in their pocket yes. to look at mm -hmm. it to see you know yeah i went back through and looked at some of the prints that i already own and a lot of them are like that you can see the little dots or mm -hmm. the, little swirls yeah, yeah little there's swirls a lot of times you yeah know? that's um, and both of them were actually different mm -hmm. but you could tell that they were all consistent in mm -hmm. the way mm -hmm. that they the prints were made mm -hmm. tell us about the movie poster then what year what year was it made uh, and well what... i would say you know that thing's got to be at least 20 years old mm -hmm. um it's in pristine con condition and stuff um, I just, I'm a big fan of Raiders of the Lost Ark, you know. Uh, and, imagine uh, that. <laughs> Harrison Ford is one of my favorite actors and stuff like that. And, um, you know, it does, this isn't so much as being old as it is for me being collectible because I like the actor, you know. Mm -hmm. 
So it's a good looking poster, that's for sure. Hmm. What do you think it's worth, and uh, what do you think you'll be asking out of it? I would say twenty five dollars, because of uh, the condition and everything. It's already got a frame around it, and uh, you know, it it kind of reminds you of the movie w when you saw it. Oh yeah. Know? So you got the snakes in there, and you got everybody looking looking scary in there you know i loved it when you walked in with it i thought wow that's a great piece mm -hmm. well why don't we move over to the table here and maybe you can tell us a few things about some of the some of the different items that are on the table yep. i would like to start with this piece of stoneware uh, this is what they call a batter bowl it does have some some uh, cracks in it that has been repaired but this is authentic and you can tell by the glazing and you can tell that you know some stuff comes out that is reproduction that is real shiny you want to stay clear of that this has got a lot of blue on it and what they did was uh, they would dip their hand in ink and and put it on um, on here and then put it a glaze on it and then set it in the oven for that the more blue the more valuable usually on that and okay. if, you can, if you can put your hand on on it and you're touching blue pretty much everywhere uh -huh. the more value these things this batter bowl is an extremely rare piece to find you'll find crocs but you won't find batter bowls i've had this for a little over 30 years i picked it up down in west virginia at an auction out in the country and i was thrilled to get it i bet you know what do you guesstimate the value to be on a piece like that even though it has cracks yeah. in it well let me let me back up here Depending on who made it, okay, and of course, depending on the condition and everything, um, I'll tell you a little story. I bought a crock down in Morgantown, uh, West Virginia, and this guy had pulled up in an old beat-up cutlass, and he had usually good stuff. And so he pulls his palatine crock out, had a stencil horse standing up on its hind legs. The only problem with the crock was that it had a hole about the size of a nickel dead center in, in the base. And so anyhow, he was getting beat over the head by the local folks saying, you know, we don't buy broken Crocs and stuff. So I asked him, I says, how much for it? He says, I got to make $135 out of it. So I said, okay, set that aside and let me look through everything else. So I bought about $300 worth of stuff off the guy. I kept the Croc for two or three years. I took it finally to Crocker Farms north of Baltimore, which the guy is an expert on Crocs, and I showed it to him. He looked at it, he says, look, that's an extremely rare croc. He says, it's a shame it's got a hole in it, but he says, we'll put it up at the end of the auction. So anyhow, it came up for, at the end of the auction, and it brought $450. Wow. And that Oops. was from $135 mm -hmm. to $450 on that. End of, and I helped the guy out, and of course, you know, made some profit on it by keeping it long enough until I finally decided I was going to go ahead and sell it. Yeah. This croc here, because of, of its um, rarity, being a batter bowl, I would say would bring somewhere between seven to nine hundred dollars. Wow. Just because of the rarity of it. Yeah. And even though it's got cracks and stuff. And while I was down there at Crocker Farms, they had on display Strasburg crocs. And what had happened was that in the city of Strasburg, there was a guy that was renting a house. And he called up his landlord and he says, hey, you know, the drain's plugged. Hmm. So they went out there and they dug up the drain and come find out they had taken crocs about the size of this, chopped off the bottom of it, and laid them end to end to end as yeah. a drainage thing. That was the pipe. <laughs> yeah, that was the pipe. And and the uh, the painting on it was in mint shape. Wow. In mint shape. And it was probably 15, 20 different crocs, end to end to end to end. And the guy took the crocs. And he put new bottoms on them, and you could not tell that wow. that was done. Huh. You know, that's how professional it was. Another story I, I, I had heard while I was down in West Virginia was that um, I was at a flea market, and a guy told me, he says, yeah, says a guy bought a bunch of Crocs, had it in the back of his pickup truck, was driving home, and there was a light drizzle rain started. By the time he got home, all the blue had washed off of the oh, side of the Croc. They were nice. all fakes, all yeah. fakes, you know. So anytime you got like cracks or whatever the case is, they call that uh, referred to as a character flaws, mm -hmm. and um, that pretty much tells you that it's legit. You know, gotcha. if there's no damage and you've got something that's 150, 200 years old, 
be a little bit cautious. Oh, yeah, for you sure. Know, yeah. I've seen that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, tell us about some of the other stuff on the table. Okay. Well, here's a couple of uh, Goodyear things that I picked up about two years ago. And it says Goodyear Inventor. I've never seen anything like that. Yeah. But I like Goodyear items. You know, Goodyear Firestone and the Goodrich, all that stuff is collectible if yes. you can find it, you know. But the the guy who was selling these, evidently, he, you know, he put in a couple patents with Goodyear and they gave him a medal for it, you know. Wow. That's cool. Mm -hmm. yeah, so if the company makes money, you make money. You know? <laughs> yes, yeah. So, and um, this I picked up recently. It's some kind of sundial with a toad. I have no idea, but you can tell that it's old. You know, you can still got the spider webs and everything in there and, and the coloration. And you, you never want to take the patina off of anything hardly at all. Uh, especially coins. If you start polishing them up, the value drops, you know. That's for sure. And so, you know, with the patina on here, you can tell this is old. And, um, you know, I, I guess it's a conversational piece or uh, something to give your mother-in-law or something. You know, I don't know. You know. I know. A lot of people <laughs> like putting this in their garden or mm -hmm. uh, just as a little decorative piece. Mm -hmm. It's like you can kind of see where it came from. Tell us about some of the metals you have there next to it. Okay. Well, you've got uh, this one. Some kind of counter or whatever, 117 Warwick, and um, gives gives the location Tuscarawas, Ohio, and uh, some of these these lodges and stuff like that can be really highly collectible. Also, mm -hmm. you just have to know what you're looking at. Um, there's different metals here. Some of them are military metals, uh, like over here. This is a military metal from World War II. Okay, oh, wow. and uh, you can get uh, Oh, purple hearts pretty easily. And I have heard that purple hearts sometimes might be 14 karat solid gold. Mm. So you always want to look at, at the metals pretty close on that end of it. But there was different campaigns. You know, you had European campaign, the Pacific campaign. So World War II people are dying off real fast. There's very few World War II vets out there. I know from this summer I did a lot of garage sailing and it's not uncommon to see these types of metals you don't see them all the time but mm -hmm. i would say probably a couple times a month i was running into those and, yeah um some i had knowledge of some i didn't and that's mm -hmm. that's really the trick to know what you're looking at mm -hmm. first of all know is it real or fake anymore right. mm -hmm. and secondly what's it worth and what are you willing to pay for it because sometimes people will have something that they think is worth a hundred dollars that may mm -hmm. only be worth 20 or 30 dollars mm -hmm. you run into that very much well I've always, when I go to yard sales, I, I always ask people, do you have any military stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, so you never know what somebody might bring out. One yard sale that I went to, uh, the lady says, yeah, my son collects knives. So anyhow, she goes in and she brings out a World War II knife. Uh, it's a Deutschland on it, wow. you know? And uh, so I was able to get that. But you, sometimes you just have to ask people, you know, what they've got. And uh, you'd be surprised what they've got. <laughs> we have a lot of World War II collectors that come into the store here. And they're constantly asking for that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. Now this here, these were done during the time of Vietnam. Okay. This one's got 1967 Major John uh, Martin on it. And... When these guys became mi missing in action, POWs or whatever, at that time frame, people would make these bracelets, and a lot of people would wear them as a uh, memorial or to remember this guy and not forget him when he was shot down over there, what a case is. And um, this one here is uh, Captain Jim Chipman, 1972. Now, I think the Vietnam War ended in 1974. And a friend of mine down in um, Petersburg area, Virginia, he collects these things. Well, he bought a couple of them off me, and he went and found the family of this guy. And when he, he, he worked for the government, and when he flew out west to California, he went and looked these, guy, these, these folks up. Mm, and well, they about cool. broke down weeping. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah, when they got these back. So... They're, they're highly collectible. They're hard to find. Any idea of a value on those? Mm. Well, to the family, it's priceless. Well, right. sure. you know, of course. But um, I would say, 
I would say at least twenty five dollars a piece. Yeah. You know, at least you know it, it's it's not silver or anything, but it was customary to remember the MIA or or the POW. You know, do you think they made multiples of the same bracelet then? There may have been a hundred of those made, or do you think I would made, think so? They made several yeah. just to mm -hmm. hand them yeah. out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Well, hopefully the families all have those. Mm -hmm. well, hopefully the servicemen were able to return back home. But mm -hmm. we know a lot of them did yeah, not. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. The guy, the guy that uh, uh, Charlie was the guy's name down there in uh, uh, Virginia. He he was a uh, captain in the military, active. And when he got it, uh, like I said, he he traveled all over the country with his job and that. When he got out there to California, he looked the family up, showed up, and. Gave it to him. They just broke down weeping. Oh, but that would be amazing. So what else you got on the table? Well, you got different patches of different groups and stuff like this. I think this one is probably a Navy SEAL uh, symbol right here. Mm -hmm. And it says Naval Special Warfare Command. So anything that is unusual is, is desirable, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, I bought a jacket, and I wish I would have kind of hung on to it. But I, I bought a jacket down in um, Pennsylvania, and it had all kinds of special operation patches on the leather jacket from the war in Iraq. And um, <laughs> I gave it to my nephew, <laughs> and I says, now, whatever you do, don't sell it, and um, you know, don't give it away or anything like that, because <laughs> the value is going to go way up on the thing. Yeah. You know? And I believe this is the first cavalry right here on that end of it. Yeah. And, of course, you got different different symbols for the navy and different things like that the more unusual the more striking the more conversational pieces you're looking at and stuff Tell me like about that. some of the paper money you brought in well this is all foreign money you know and of course kids like to look at that stuff you know and try yeah. to figure out exactly you know how much is this thing worth or whatever the case is on that and there's a bunch of foreign coins in here uh from all over the world and kids like those too you know yeah so you know somebody might been in the military and the navy or whatever went overseas and, and collected all these foreign coins and come home and dropped them in a jar or, or whatever the case is you know so one of my first lessons in the gold and silver business is that i had a customer bring in a bunch of mexican currency mm -hmm. and i thought well hey i'll figure out the conversion rate and i'll convert it and you know try to make a couple bucks on it mm -hmm. i don't know the exact time frame of how often mexico does this but on occasion they totally changed their whole currency. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so it's so the currency that I bought was yeah. worth zero. Oh well, yeah. There was yeah. no value to it because yeah. they weren't dealing in that type of currency anymore. I could not believe it. That oh, was yeah. it happened to that me. That was too. a huge lesson oh, yeah. for yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was yeah, it, it happened to me at one yard. How could you too. even think that would happen, you know? I mean like I never considered that as a possibility. Well, I, I was thinking it was silver at the time. Right? Yeah. And I said, well, mm -hmm. silver, silver, you know, and you got to be real careful when you're looking at some of that yes, stuff. Yes, you know? I learned a good lesson. That was about a $400 lesson for mm. me. Yeah. I've had a lot of lessons in this business. So yeah. Part well, of the reason why I'm glad you're here is you can help people that are watching mm -hmm. prevent some of these mistakes yep. going well, forward. You know, knowledge is power, as they say. Yeah. And, and the more you talk to people, and pick their brains and say, you know, what have you found out and what is collectible in this area? Because as you move around the country and that, different things are more collectible in that area than what it is over in this area. Yes. You know, so mm -hmm. you just have to do the, do the homework and talk to people and uh, see what people are buying. Go to antique stores and look to see exactly what people are putting out there to sell yeah you know and that yeah. will gauge you as to what's collectible for that area yeah i agree we're going to do a segment coming up about silver plate plated material we get tons of calls every week and mm. people will say i have sterling silver pottery jewelry or not pottery but you know um any kind of kitchenware that kind of stuff mm -hmm. and that was my first lesson in in the gold and silver business when i bought what i thought was sterling silver mm -hmm. but it was not it was silver plated right and so a lot of people need to know that if it's sterling or if it's um if it's mark 925 or sterling silver mm -hmm. that's a good product yeah just as if you'd make a cadillac or a bmw they put the name right on it mm -hmm. and typically things that are not marked sterling or 925 are just plated that's Yep. Not always. Yep. I understand that there's always a, a fraction that are not. Well, my, my rule of thumb is that if you look at the name, 
okay mm -hmm. like for instance if it says rogers yeah okay that's the maker i would say 99 percent of the times it's not going to be sterling right. it's not going to be silver period you yeah. know because it's going to be plated you mm -hmm. know and of course uh in order to check some of that stuff you have to scratch it real hard on a stone and hit it with acid and, yeah and see exactly if it turns a certain color or whatever the case is and that's the safest way now they do have guns out there uh the first one i ever saw was down in baltimore and it cost thirty thousand dollars and this yeah. this it was like a big old flashlight and they zapped it and it would tell you exactly what the material content was of that particular item you know and you have to be real cautious and checking some of this stuff because um there's a lot of fakery out there you know, know. it might be stamped 14. i bought a piece of jewelry that was stamped 18 karat mm -hmm. and i resold it and the guy called me up a few days later and says this ain't real you know <laughs> so i had to go back and re uh give him back his money and stuff like that but you have to be very very cautious uh, another rule of thumb is that if you got a magnet and you take a magnet to it and if it picks up it's not real that's right you know because that's it's right. got a mixture of other types of uh, mm -hmm. metals and stuff like that in there on it tell us about your rings you brought though those are beautiful yeah now this one is uh 19 diamonds in it it's what i call a cluster ring and um it's 14 karat and it says p right after it and p means that it's plum right and so what that means is that it has at least 14 karat gold in it possibly a little bit over that mm -hmm. so it's got to be at least 14 karat and then if it says p after it it doesn't mean plated it means plum we melt a lot of our own jewelry here at ohio trading and uh, ohio coin and jewelry and we find that a 14 karat ring should be 58 and a half percent most of those come in around 56 55 mm -hmm. yep there isn't really 14 karat in it it's, mm -hmm. it's less than that but this is yeah, yeah. oh yeah because of Agreed. the p the p right, right after it yeah. yeah we but we a lot of the jewelry that people bring in is not actual 14 mm -hmm. karat it's a little bit less yeah you can kind of see the markings in there right yeah. there mm -hmm. yeah that's a beautiful ring what do you think something like that's worth and what would you be asking for it? well i was told it was worth at the bare minimum 600 to 800 and i had one guy says if i buy it i'm going to mark it up to 1500 oh he had that kind of clientele coming into his store on that end of it, on the west side of Akron, mm -hmm. you know. This one is a 10 carat. I don't know what kind of stone it is, but it's a heavy ring as far as the band is concerned on that end of it. And it's a newer ring on that end of it. And when I buy, when I buy rings, I also look at the, uh, to see exactly, okay, do I like this stone? Is this desirable? Is this something I haven't seen before or whatever the case is? Mm -hmm. Love opals. Yeah. I mean, I just love opals and stuff like that. So if it's, if it's a ring that isn't common, you know, because there's so many rings out there, you can't buy everything out there, you yeah. know? So you got to buy what you like, because if you don't like it, you're stuck with it, yeah. you know? <laughs> so, you if know. you pay too much, you are, that's for yep, sure. Yep, yep. So what do you value something like that at? Uh, this one, uh, I would have to get uh, 250 out of that. Yeah. You know. And is that 10 or 14 karat? That's 10. 10 karat. Yep. Yeah. And it's got a thick band on it as far as that goes. Yeah. And then you have a bracelet. This, yeah. This this is sterling. And um, let me say, if it says 925 on it, it, it usually means it's a it's it's silver, but it is also a newer piece yeah. so if you find jewelry you would like to have it say sterling because it's an older piece mm -hmm. okay vintage and that's what you're looking for but this has turquoise in it and malachite i believe onyx i'm not sure what the blue is it may be turquoise also but it's well made that's the other thing oh, i yeah. look for is that it's well made it's not going to fall apart by using it or anything like that that is a nice piece. Yep. It'll probably look good on your wrist. Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> so. Yeah, it would look good in the showcase. I know yep. that. Now, nice this, this, this is made in Mexico here, and this is silver also, and it's got black onyx on it, you know. And you, it's got a little bit of wear, got a little dent on this, this guy right here, but it is silver on that end of it. So I look for this kind of stuff also, oh, you know. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I'll just set that right back down there. Very interesting. Tell us about your jewelry box. And okay. Slide this out of the way. 
Now, I'm going to start with some simple stuff here. Um, these little ladies watches will bring, on an average, I got a lady that buys these off me for $5 a watch, mm -hmm. okay? Even though it might be gold plated and even though it might be gold filled, she'll pay $5 a watch. And what she did was that she took a bunch of these little watches and made another bracelet oh. out of it as, you know, a conversational piece, you yeah. know? She was selling those things for three hundred dollars. Oh, uh, jeez! You know, yeah. And she, all they were were just ladies' watches that she had taken apart and put them all together. And they may have worked, they may not have worked, but it was a conversational piece, yeah. you know. And she was selling those things. Now, when you find something like this, you want to look at the back, and usually it'll be stamped either up here or whatever the case is, if it's gold or whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. If it says gold uh, RGP, that means uh, roll gold plated. Okay, and that's the lowest of the lowest. Okay, yeah. and then you got gold filled, which is the next step up. And sometimes they'll be stamped 10 carat or whatever the case is, and might even be stamped 14 carat. So if it's not marked there, you want to take a little pocket knife with you and pop the back off and look at the inside of the cover to see if it's stamped 10 carat or 14 carat. And with that, uh, well, actually, I don't mean to cut you off. They but, make a little tool for that now. Oh, okay. And uh, we we well, have I'll let, one here. I'll let you do that. Yeah, I have to get my glasses <laughs> to do it. Uh, we've found, though, that lately uh, a lot of these are not marked on the outside. So mm -hmm. when you are at a garage sale and you're looking, um, it's worth your time to get one of these little tools. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll set that back over there yep. for you. Okay. And you can see what it says inside. Um, I've popped probably six or seven in the last couple months mm -hmm. that... Just look, they were gold in color, but they didn't have any special markings on the outside. Mm -hmm. When I opened them, the, they were, uh, I think most of them were 14 carat, but mm -hmm. um, I may have had one 10 carat. So you really don't know what the watch. You really have to do your homework and you really have to open it up if you want to see mm -hmm. if it's gold or not. Yeah. Well, I'm going to set that right there and I'll yeah. fix that back on that end of it. Um, they will scrap. Uh, if it's 14, they will scrap when the glass is taken out at about eighty dollars scrapping yeah. you know yeah. somewhere right. wearing that now this is costume here and of course the bigger the glass or whatever the case is usually the more desirable because everybody likes flashy stuff you know uh this is marked sterling it's not real big or anything but it's got a maker's mark on it there there's uh, jewelry out there that's made by Scandinavia, Denmark, and that's collectible. That's desirable. It don't you know? It don't have to be b real big or anything like that. Now this, I believe, is 14, and where you would look for it would be on these stems right here. And you got to have real good eyes or a <laughs> magnifying glass or oh, whatever geez. the case is. But it's, it's stamped on this little piece here, 14 karat. So. Yeah. Let's take a look at that. Yeah. And I'm thinking this is turquoise too. I've never seen a color one like this, but it's set in sterling. Okay. And it says 925, so it means it's a newer piece. And the chain. Chains are getting harder to find that have any kind of length. So a 20 inch chain is hard to find but a 30 inch is even harder to find you know yeah so and this is a piece of turquoise just by the color on it you can tell on that end of it it's probably set in silver it's made in mexico on that end of it but it's a low key key holder and this is a money clip and it's turquoise and it's got coral accents on each side of this Okay, uh, coral, the bigger the piece of coral, the more valuable, of course. But coral is extremely hard to find anymore, you know. You can find small stuff, but to find a piece of coral the size of that turquoise right there would be hard to, hard to find. What do you value something like that? This? Mm -hmm. I'd say between, depending on the piece, somewhere between 45 to Sixty-five dollars. Yeah, and that's yeah. easily something you could go to a garage sale and pick up for a quarter. Uh, mm -hmm. Easy. Yep. yep. And it'd be filthy dirty, also. Yeah. You know, yeah. so <laughs> you would have to uh, take either a toothbrush with some baking soda and scrub it yeah. under some hot water, 
or you can get you some semi-chrome and polish it with the rag or whatever the case is, and that'll clean it real fast. And right? a lot of jewelry, just a little bit of hot water and a, and a rag cleans them, cleans up a lot of things you wouldn't think. Mm -hmm. Now, this, this is a piece of silver that's gold over silver, and that's getting to be pretty common right now because yeah. people can't afford gold. Um, somebody had told me in the past that if they took all the gold in the world, it would fill two Olympic size swimming pools. Hmm. That's all the gold there is that yeah. they know of. You oh, know? Geez. So that, you know, that, that was amazing to me, you know. Well, it's interesting when you think about gold because it seems like a lot of the surface gold has been found. Mm -hmm. The easy, the easy gold, the easy silver to get has been found. So now to get that stuff, you have to go very deep in the ground to get it, mm -hmm. which makes it more expensive. Either that or people's got it in their house and they just haven't looked. Yeah. You know, yeah. That, that's the case in a lot of times. You oh, know? We just did a video about that yesterday. Um, it was two ladies had brought in some stuff and it was, um, it was like around $400 worth of product. And mm -hmm. they said, I can't believe that's been sitting in my jewelry box this whole time. Mm -hmm. And she actually was going to go home and look for other stuff that she had. Well, I've even, I've even bought uh, gold teeth at yard sales <laughs> and they're 16 carats. They're not 14. They're 16. Now, I have to know? be honest with you. We buy a lot of gold teeth here. <laughs> Believe it or not. Yeah. But I have a rule. And mm -hmm. this is a real simple rule. If you bring the actual teeth in, mm -hmm. I can give you a hammer and I hand it to you and I say, go outside and take care of it. Oh, yeah. And we have an area because it just makes me, it, does, yeah. it makes me yeah. want to puke. But <laughs> I, I had, I, I'm not kidding. I had a full set of teeth one time <laughs> that came in. It was all wrapped around this. And it was a lot of gold. Mm -hmm. But um, anyways, I made the guy. I said you got to go out and clean that up. I can't deal with <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, well. And the first time you see it, though, you don't believe it's real. Oh, yeah. And I've seen that at garage sales too, mm -hmm. where people will just put it out, and you may see me just have a tooth that's in a box like that. Mm -hmm. Well, I've, I've I've been to some garage, uh, well, yard sales, and they, I'd say, do you have any uh, gold teeth by chance? Oh yeah, Grandpa's dentures are sitting on the bureau. Let me <laughs> get them, you know. Yeah. And the other thing is that the old tiny glasses, you know, the wireframe glasses and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. A lot of times they'll be 14 karat gold. Yes. They'll be stamped on the inside or on the bridge itself. Yeah. And uh, if you can get it at a reasonable price in that, um, you're talking $80 scrap right there. And, you know, dental gold comes out between somewhere between 16 karat and 18 karat. Yeah. So it's not it's not like a regular 14 karat. So even a little bit of that's very adds valuable. Up. Oh, yeah. yeah. Adds up real fast, you know. Well, tell us what else you got here, and then we're going to have to wrap up pretty okay. soon. But this has been very interesting. Now, this this is gold over silver also, and it, it, it says it on its class, but th this one's made in China. I try to buy things that are made in Thailand if, as far as the Far East is concerned. You know, mm -hmm. just uh, just my preference or whatever the case is on that. But um, usually, if, if you've got like a little hinge on each side of these, Mm -hmm. That usually means it's a better piece, right. you know. So it's 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 a hasp that they don't want it to fall off and get lost or whatever the case is, yeah, like a lobster claw, or mm -hmm. something like yep. that. It's... Now sometimes those lobster claws, and this has just happened within the last couple of years or so. The price on those things, if you had to go buy a big, large, sterling lobster claws, are going for a hundred bucks. Oh yeah, just for the lobster claws, you know. Yeah. So, you know, parts are parts. If you can find mm -hmm. stuff, you just kind of put it all together. This is Southwestern. This is one of their little sterling bears or whatever the case is on that end of it. And uh, don't know what this is, but I, I kind of liked it. And I believe it's silver also. Well, so the advice I would have for anyone that's a garage selling flea marketing, you find uh, a jewelry box like this. Really look at it because there's tons of different parts that could be reused for many different things. Yeah, well, some people will take the junk jewelry and make a uh, design or uh, painting out of it type thing. You yeah. Know? So, you know, there's there's always somebody out there that's going to do something. You know? Yeah. Now, this is sterling here, and it's marked, but that that to replace would be 100 bucks. I believe if, it. If you had to go buy one of these out of the, uh, another store or whatever the case is. Just that lobster claw would be a hundred bucks by itself, but that's yeah. that's solid sterling on that end of it. And then uh, this is costume, and I I like this, um, just because of the coloration. You know, this this would bring somewhere between, I'd say forty to fifty dollars 
just because of the condition and the coloration on it. This here, of course, let me back up here. Color will bring more money than plain. Okay. Okay. This is kind of plain, but guess what? When you look at the back side of it, it's signed. It says Wise right there. Yep. Weiss, W E I S S. Mm -hmm. yep. mm -hmm. So it's a good quality piece. It's yeah. a collectible piece. The only problem is you've got to look these things over real close. This has got a couple little tiny spots on here that are missing the stones. Nothing big that oh, yeah. you can't replace. You just have to have the patience to go out there and find the piece to put back in. There, <laughs> How do you, know? you get a piece like that replaced? How, what would be the best way to do it? Well, there, you find somebody that's a collectible. You know, and they're always going to have parts or parts, you yeah. know. So then you say, hey, can you fix this or will you buy it as is, yeah. you know, and let them deal with it, you know. There's people out there that will fix this kind of stuff, you know. I've always passed on pieces that had any broken parts or wasn't, but yeah. probably shouldn't do that. Nope, huh? nope, especially if it's a signed piece. You don't want to do that at, uh, at yeah. all. And what happened was back uh, when people were wearing the, these pieces of costume jewelry, the ladies would put it on her uh, coat or, or uh, dress or whatever the case is, and they'd be spraying the, the perfume. Well, the perfume got down on the piece itself, and it ate the foil from the back uh, of, the, of the piece. Yes. So when you got the darker stones that are discolored in that, that's from the perfume that ate the foil from the back of the, of, of the piece itself. I see. All right, well, they're giving us the signal that we got to wrap up. Maybe tell us quickly anything you know about this drum, and we'll, we'll see if I, we can make I a pick, deal. I picked the drum up here, uh, <sighs> over here in Hartfield, and one morning, you know, oh, yeah. I got out there real early, and guy pulled that thing out. Kind of brought back memories, because when I was growing up, I, I used the Quaker Oats <laughs> container to beat on yeah. as a little kid, as a, as a drummer, you know? Yeah. So I bought this thing, I said, you know, it's real, got good sound, yeah. you know? And it'll drive your parents crazy. You know, so. Yeah. Well, I know this is a bigger deal than normal, so we'll have to take a little bit of time and figure out piece by piece what we're interested in and what you want to sell. Folks, I want to thank you for joining us today. Again, this is Gene. He's a professional picker and a wealth of knowledge. And thank you for being a part yeah. of our show today. Right. I thank really you. appreciate it. Yeah. it was, it's great getting to know you. Yeah. And I know you said you got more stuff you're going to bring in. So. Oh, I got a lot right. of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you constantly kind of just keep finding stuff, right? Oh, yeah. That's, yeah, that's I'm always looking. Do. I'm always looking. I'm always talking to people. And, um, you know, uh, I'm a single guy. And it helps fill up my day. Well, that's a good know, way to so, look at yeah. it, yeah. So, so folks, if uh, if there's any piece you'd want Gene to take a look at, you can just message us or let us know. Um, watch for more exciting videos. And if you haven't seen our other videos, we hope you'll stop by and check those out. We're now on, I think, segment four or five. And we hope to do many more of this this year and next year. Thanks for visiting us. If there's anything we can help you with at Ohio Trading Coin and Jewelry, just give us a call. We buy, buy and sell gold, silver, and diamonds on a daily basis. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you.